Well, I came back in yesterday and I fiberglassed the other side of the boat and it's completely tack free now, uh, which is what we call dry but not cured. It's gonna take another three or four days for it to absolutely cure. Actually a little bit less because it's pretty warm right now. Um, and I've trimmed out most of the boat and you can see that. And I wanted to leave this for you to show you basically how to clean it up in between. So like on the other side of this, you would have had this coming up here. So I would have had to have cleaned all that up before I fiberglass. And you just take a razor knife and slide it right down. And I like to do all this as soon as possible uh, because it's really, really sharp. So don't be running your fingers along it. I have this sure form here, which is basically just a rasp. And I take it and I run it down to get all the sharp edges off of there. All right, so now gently you can run your fingers down through there and make sure that's all good to go. <clears throat> now I will take a little bit of sandpaper and get rid of some of this gunk up here by the junction because the next step that we're going to do is we're gonna to start to put our keel on and that's gonna require us to go from here right on up. A nice smooth transition on this boat. Now, depending on which model you're working on, you may have to put one up to here and then put another one to go past that. It's all gonna vary on the boat and you're just gonna have to make that decision as you're going. At this particular boat, we have a nice smooth transition from this skeg bed right to the hull of the boat. So we need to put this on here and uh, we're gonna do that using some tie down straps and in my case, a couple of staples here. But before we do that, first we need to put on the back end here, we need to put our jig back up so that we stay out of trouble as we're going along. Um, so the jig's gonna go back up here. These will slide down in between and we'll mount them going straight up the boat. Now, you have probably noticed that the strip that I have here is not long enough. And that's fine because what we're going to be doing is epoxying this down to the boat. So whether it's one or two pieces, it really doesn't matter uh, because that epoxy is gonna give you some incredible strength. So I'm gonna put this in, let it go, you know, within two or three feet of the end and I'll splice a two or three foot piece in up there. Um, and then at some point, we are gonna have another piece that's gonna go from here all the way up and around the stem and that'll connect everything together and that'll be two pieces too. So we'll just make sure that the two joints that we do aren't, aren't uh, at the same place mm -hmm. there. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and get that jig reattached and then we will go about the business of putting this first piece down. And then from there, it's just, you know, one little piece after another. So as we build this up, this will ultimately come up so that it's straight like that. So you can see at the, at the, uh, when all is said and done, our dead wood will be right about there. And we'll have little filler pieces that'll go in there and we'll sand all that down and fit it in. Okay. I'm gonna put that jig back on and then we're going to uh, get this piece laid in. So we got our jig set uh, back up in the transom again. That's all lined up. So in order to put this piece, this keel line going down the middle here, you know, the chances of you having a 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 foot piece that doesn't do this, it's pretty slim, right? Because it's quarter inch and, and it's just gonna do that. So what I've done is I've taken a string again and I've gone from the outside edge of my outer stem to the outside edge of my uh, skeg bed down there and I pulled the string taut. And then I took a piece of blue tape and I went right down. And what that does is it gives me one side of where I'm going to lay that keel line going all the way down. And I know that I'll just keep pulling it, walking it in all the way down and keeping it straight with the tape. So I'm gonna jump into the drawers now and I'm gonna get out uh, uh, bunch of tie down ratchets we're going to mix up a little bit of epoxy and we're going to put this down well, I am prepped and ready to go here what I did is I mixed up some epoxy I put clear epoxy on the underside of this uh, first piece of keel here, clear epoxy down here in the bedding. And then I thickened it up a little bit with uh, some wood flour. 
And then I ran a, a bed of that along. So I uh, put the second coat of fiberglass on this yesterday, or second layer of fiberglass on this yesterday. So that means it's not fully cured. So I should get a good mechanical and electrical bond going here. Uh, excuse me, uh, chemical and mechanical bond going on here. Uh, and I am ready to go. So what I have done here is I have put uh, basic cargo straps, you know, get them from Home Depot kind of straps. And I put them all along. What I'm going to do, I've got some scrap one bys here that I'm going to put up there. I'm going to just take these one at a time and start to tighten them up. Another set of hands is probably warranted this particular part of the project. If you got them hanging around, this is a good time to bring them in. Oops, that's kind of why. All right. So the first part of the job here is just kind of get it close and get things started. critical part of this job is lining it up right because you know once that's dry that's all she wrote so uh, if you remember what we did in epoxy 101 you remember that we do not need huge cranking power when clamping two things together that use epoxy right they just basically need to be taught with one another more firm. So you're not looking to squeeze all that epoxy out of there. You're just really looking to ratchet it down until you start to see it ooze out on the sides. And once that happens, you've pretty much gone far enough. So again, just be mindful of being nice and straight as you go down here. You want to make it tight enough so that you can't easily, you know, push down and see it, you know, that squishy that you see where it goes in and out and in and out. Just want to make sure that that goes away. There. All right. So I am going to continue on down here. And just watch the edge of that tape. Make sure you're lined up well. This is one of those jobs where you basically just need to take all the time you need to take to get it done right. And you don't walk away from this boat until you are absolutely satisfied that it is straight and where you want it to be. Because I guarantee you, once it's down, you're not pulling it back up again. Makes if you want it off, you're going to have to grind it off. The reason for these blocks here is to kind of even out the pressure going down. So I don't have to have 30s, these little straps going down there. And if you find that it's rocking or pivoting one way or the other, you can just slide this board forward or backward and that should take care of it. Make it rock the other way, the opposite way of where you have a problem. All right, so I'm just going to finish that up for the rest of these going down.
pretty satisfied with the way that came out. So now, the only thing left to do is the actual skeg piece here. And I'm using this again for a couple of reasons. First one being is I have it. Second one is we're filming and it definitely speeds up the process while filming. So for all those reasons, we are in good shape, looks like. All right, so you notice this. During that process at the end there, I took a spoon, paper towel, and I went along and I cleaned up. Uh, biggest reason for that is because I want to make sure that I could see that blue tape, make sure that I had a nice, clean, straight line going down there. I, I cannot stress enough. It, there is no good enough when it comes to doing this. Either your keel is straight or it's not. So, you know, take the time, get it done. And if you get this far and you say, wow, what a disaster, that thing is snaking down the boat, take it off, clean it up. Try it again. Uh, do it till you get it right. Because the one thing you have to absolutely have to do is put a straight keel on your boat. Uh, I don't think you're going to have any problems. Just take your time. Make sure you're using slow cure epoxy. And, you know, it's probably not a good idea to be doing it if it's above 90 degrees. Because, you know, even slow cure epoxy at above 90 degrees is going to cure pretty darn quick. Uh, and then the last thing you want to do is clean up real well. Uh, I'm taking all the extra out because we're going to come back later. We're going to do a nice clean fillet there and put a little piece of glass tape going up the sides on, you know, on both sides, which will really well connect the, the keel to the bottom of the boat. So all I'm doing now is getting rid of all this stuff that I'm going to end up having the sand if I don't. And, you know, like we've said before, better spend a few minutes cleaning up now and an hour sanding later because this stuff is uh once it gets hard it's really really hard okay take my fingers my gloved fingers here and just roll right up the side okay uh and it looks really good all right so this is as far as i you know i'm gonna go for right now uh it's gonna take a day for this dry i'll come back and i'll fill in the little end piece there and then i'll show you how we incorporate the stem into the keel piece and, uh, and build up our skeg here. Everything's coming along just lovely. If you're working along with me, then uh, you should be pretty happy at this point because everything looks pretty good. All right, so uh, fuss with it as much as you need to. Get it done right and leave it alone. And uh, we'll see you when this is dry.